on the dick. I kiss you on the lips. Kiss. Kiss you on the dick. That's a great way to start it off. I kiss you on the that. dick. That. Like something about these chairs makes me want to sit like this. Always. Well, because they're not shaped for you to sit up. Like you're at a desk. They're shaped kind of for you to lean back, and that's the extreme version of leaning back. Snap your fingers, and then lean back, and then dance like DJ Khaled. Welcome, everyone, <laughs> to the Jenna and Julian podcast. How about my foot? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so funny. It sounds so epic. Um, what do we want to do today, Julian? Well, we... Uh, we were thinking about that last, uh, not the last one, but a couple podcasts ago when we talked about our favorite rappers, our top five favorite rappers, and that is more of like a discussion intensive thing. So we thought we were going to do our top five of something else today, but we we're going to do more than one and it's all going to be in the childhood bracket of things. So what are they? Yeah, we decided to make lists of our top five favorite video games. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. Top five shows, television shows growing, growing up. Growing up, yep. Growing up. Top five things you couldn't live without at middle school age. Just middle school. Top five favorite video games growing up. Mm -hmm. And our top five senpais growing up. Our senpais. The ones that we wanted to notice us. And wouldn't notice us. They would not notice us. Because there was no internet. Well, yeah, I know. It's it's crazy, right? Because you had just posters of them on your wall, and that's about as close as you you can get. Yeah, unless you bought tickets to their show, you could see them from the nosebleed seats. Yeah, for real. Well, I guess... You know, without further ado, we should just get started. Let's do it. This is a trip down feels memory it's lane. It's funny and fun, and then you have to leave all of yours in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. So yeah, that we leave, can know yours exactly so on, on all can, the categories, so that we can know all the ones that we forgot. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be at the corner of Feels Lane and Memory Street. Well, ours are also gonna be different because I grew up. Yeah, Before that's that's you. what's going to be interesting, I think. I think there's going to be a, a giant um, curve to yeah. this. Yeah, and for those of you that are listening that are older or younger, you'll obviously have different ones too. But that's also what I like about the Top 5 Favorite Rappers podcast that we did because... But that's you know, also affected by our age. Right, and yeah. every time that I have that conversation with people, it says a lot about you know who they are and where they grew up yeah. and like how old they for were sure. or all for of sure. that. Yeah, yeah. Because I knew plenty of kids that didn't start listening to rap until they got to college and then you have to give them like a crash course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, everyone's kind of like, I mean, you assumed everyone kind of got experience and exposure to rap, but then... But they don't. They don't. Yeah, because people are raised differently than others and... For know. sure. Let's, let's get into it. All right. How about you do... You do your top five shows growing up first. Go. Yeah? You got to list them and then we'll talk about it. Okay. And then I'll list mine and then we'll talk about mine. Oh. Is your phone dead? Oh, <laughs> Just decided not to wake up. Thanks, phone. It is okay. and live. My top five favorite shows growing up. And you know what? I in, know... In no particular order, though, In no right? particular order. Yeah. I did not rank them. And um, I know tomorrow I'm going to wake up and be like, fuck, I forgot know. the best one. So just forgive me for that. Uh, number one, SpongeBob. Uh, number two, Drake and Josh. Number three, Sports Center. Literally all the fucking time. <laughs> number four, Friday Night Lights. And number five, Tom and Jerry. And this growing up is it's kind of a wide range. Right, you know, yeah. it's not just one age, so yeah. it can be okay. And then Tom and Jerry, yeah. So oh, so good. Yeah. Okay. See for me, for your list. Yeah. SpongeBob, I was babysitting kids. So like although Oh, so you were I, a big old twelve year old. <laughs> yeah, no, although I like Spongebob, no, for sure. it didn't give me like childhood feels. It yeah. like reminds me that I need to go babysit. Yeah. Drake yeah, and yeah. Josh, I literally had never watched until you would turn on Nick at Night or whatever. It's I love that they that play anymore. it at Nick at Night now. It's and so they, good. They, yeah, so Julian will put it on in, in the George Lopez show. That came after Drake and Josh, I, know, but I love but that show. We're like laying in bed, and I'm like, do we have to fucking watch this right now? It's like I, I, like, I do not ever watch it. Yeah. And you're like, it's so good. It, like, it reminds me of my those childhood. Are, those are good shows. But they're actually really funny. They are. Drake yeah. and Josh is gold. I mean. Uh, I just remembered like seven more that I forgot to put on here. Okay. We'll just read whichever one's going to read. All right. Because this is our podcast, not anyone else's. True. I might have a top fucking ten right now. I just thought of like four. Okay. Um, I loved Hey Dude, Salute Your Shorts, Legends of the Hidden Temple, Guts, The Simpsons, Rugrats, Hey Arnold, and then I just remembered Full House, Saved by the Bell, America's Funniest Home Videos, and Jeopardy. Did you ever watch Rocket Power? No. Oh. You said Rugrats, but not Rocket Power. Okay. Well, I guess Rocket Power is after that. Yeah, but Rugrats that's a good list. everything. That's a good list. I watched Red Rags, too. Yeah. So you want to talk about yours, or how do you want to... 
I don't know. Do you know what Hey Dude and Salute Your Shorts are? I don't know the first four that you said, except for Temple of Doom. I don't know. Temple of Doom? Is that what you said? You mean Legends of the Hidden Temple? Oh, yeah. See, I know know Indiana Jones. That's it. I thought thought you were talking about like an Indiana Jones show. I was having a conversation with our friend Brett the other day about how much kid game shows. Sorry, I'm just adjusting that. Okay, yeah. Kid game shows were like everything when we were growing up. Yeah. We were kids in the 90s. And... Fucking so you turn on Nickelodeon and Legends of the Hidden Temple and Guts are both like kid game shows. Oh, did and, they get slimed? And, on... No, that's Double Dare, mm, which was also okay, fantastic. So I watched that. I watched Double, Double Dare was incredible. Double but Dare. the worst part about being a kid in this fucking golden age of kid game shows yeah. is that you love watching them, right? They're like suspenseful, yeah. they're epic, and the whole concept of all of them were different and great. Like Guts was just for like young athletes, okay. basically. Okay, okay. And they had to do like canoeing and fucking like shit in a pool yeah. and then like run and like be attached to a bungee cord and slam dunk a yeah. basketball and then the apex of it all that have to climb up this giant mountain with like confetti it was like the it. American Ninja Warrior of kids it's, sort of yeah, yeah. I mean, but less athletic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and um so the best and worst part about watching them was that it was like really great television. Yeah. And you could identify with them. And also there's another one I think called like Wet Wild and Crazy Kids. Like same thing. It's fucking Yeah, amazing. okay, that one sounds a little familiar. And um so you'd watch them and I would get so angry because, you know, my little cocky eight year old ass was like, dude, I can do so much better than them. Like yeah. they're so bad. And yeah. then as I got older I realized that some of it was actually really fucking hard. <laughs> You know, yeah, like yeah. as if, if you're like laying on the couch, like eating Cheetos, watching American yeah. Ninja Warrior, being like, Pfft. "Oh, he should have held like, on." Yeah, dude. Oh, you blew it. <laughs> that reminded me suck. of something. That remind- I gotta add a show after you're done. But um, so that's why um, Legends of the Hidden, Te- Hidden Temple and Guts are on there. Animation okay. is obviously in any kid's wheelhouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. But fucking Hey Dude and Salute Your Shorts mm-hmm. were like you know kids sitcoms. Yeah. So anything that was like a kid sitcom, you'd just sit there and die laughing. At, but kid game shows need to make a comeback yesterday. Right. Okay. They were so important. I remember watching a lot of the slime shows on yeah. Nickelodeon. Double Dare. Yeah, Double Dare. I mean, I don't even remember what even was I was watching. I just remember the slime and people getting slimed. and Summer Sanders and shit. But what you were just saying about uh, watching kid game shows and being like, oh, I could do that. Okay, so. Fuck those kids. Here's the story. Even get them. Yeah, fuck you. Um, so when like, I was growing I'm a cheerleader? up, cheerleader, and you're like, sit down. <laughs> no offense to real cheerleaders, the fake ones is who I'm making fun of. When I uh, was growing up, and I had recently gotten a stepbrother, two stepbrothers, and a stepsister. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Josh, my stepbrother, my older stepbrother, we would, with my stepdad, watch Fear Factor. They loved watching Fear Factor. They showed me what it was. I didn't even know what it was, but we would watch it. Like Joe quite Rogan. a lot. Yeah. And it was like a fun thing to do. Like we watched all sorts of shit we shouldn't watch, you know, when we were yeah. kids, like the man show and stuff right. like that. So we watched Fear Factor and where at the time my stepdad lived in this like townhouse mm-hmm. and there was this balcony inside the house that lead like let, looked over the bedroom, the main, the, you know, the master bedroom. And we would all lay in the master bed and watch it. And then, you know, when Fear Factor was over, we'd be all so pumped up. They'd be like, all right, well, we got to do what, some Fear what Factor. What can we do? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And our little stepbrother, what can Jake. What we do to keep this adrenaline yeah, going? Yeah, yeah. And my little stepbrother, Jake, uh, when, when we were younger, he was like so small. Yeah. He was just like, he could fit anywhere. We would put him in cabinets, like not to mess with him, just like hide and go seek and stuff like that. But he was very like small. And we would do this thing where we like jumped off the balcony onto the bed, <laughs> like as a Fear Factor. And I remember he break his body. No, in he half. bounced like so high, <laughs> and it was like so wrong, and sh- we should not have done it. But Thanks, I just remember so clearly that like we would get so hyped up from Fear Factor that we would get into it and like do it That's in the amazing. house. Yeah. Well, sidebar about Fear Factor. Yeah. For those of you that like Joe Rogan that yeah. have never watched his stand up about Fear Factor. Yeah, when he talks it's about Fear Factor. Yeah. Hysterical. Because yeah. he's like, here I am standing here telling these people, like, you can do this. Like, you can. And I'm like, I don't fucking, like, I don't, yeah. I don't think you can do this at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm just like telling them and they're listening to yeah. it. It's so funny. Yeah. Um, I also just thought of the fact that I 
loved um like your nick at night is now like fucking drake and josh and disney shit yeah but my nick at night was the Munsters and rocky and bullwinkle and i love lucy and like all this like yeah. really classic tv so yeah I'm fucking i have a really big soft spot for her like i love lucy yeah and rocky and fucking bullwinkle i watched a little rocky and bullwinkle and too the yeah. Munsters it was so good okay i'm blanking here but what was that show about the two like um like raccoons cat dog Ooh, Angry Beavers. Yeah, the Beavers. Angry, Angry Beavers? Beavers. I loved Angry, Angry Beavers. Angry Beavers. Cat Dog I watched I too. That shit. It's all the, good. the guy who did the voice of SpongeBob did mm-hmm. Cat Dog, Tom Kenny. And I also used to lot, watch a lot of Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. And we would just sit there like pissing ourselves. And it's a really fucked up show. Yeah. But for some reason, like to little kids, you don't fucking you give don't a get, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, what's funny is funny, and right now I'm dying laughing. Thanks, Nickelodeon. Yeah. Powdered Toast Man, like one pot. Do you know Powdered Toast Man? I have no is? idea about any of that. So he's a, I'm lost. a character on Red and Stimpy, and he literally was just like you could see his butt, and he was just like this Toast Man, just and he would just come laugh. in and be like, "Yeah, <laughs> Powdered Toast Man," and we and like, like I'm pretty sure I don't fucking quote me on this because I haven't gone back and watched it in yeah. so long. Yeah. But like sprinkled sugar and stuff would come out of his butt, like it was like oh the most God. ridiculous. Like so fucked. And every time he would come into the scene, I was like, game over. I was like. Yeah. Already crying laughing. Because he just crushed. Oh, it was just so fucking ridiculous. That's man. that's insane. Like, I don't know. Some of the stuff that goes into cartoons that kids don't even I don't know. Well, because it's fucking funny. It is funny. I, I liked and I A lot of the shit that's in SpongeBob yeah. is like way over your head. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I liked uh Beavis and Butthead and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But like, um I th- I liked television. Like, not only because I was younger and it was appealing to me, yeah. but in hindsight now, I liked the programming at that time, even though now it's like, you could never get away with that shit. Even yeah. SpongeBob is like, there's some fucked up stuff in there where yeah. you, like it totally gets passed. Yeah, for sure. But the, I feel like parents and everybody's so fucking like, whatever's on TV needs to be really PC and like yeah. cute and sweet and also educational and la la yeah. la. And I'm like, nah, dude, we fucking, our imaginations would explode yeah. when we would watch that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it's not right. Yeah, it's super fucked. But, like, at least it was honest. That's we, true. We grew up at least honest. That's true. You know? Yeah, no, that's true. That's absolutely a good point. Anyways, that was my soapbox about how television is now just... It's too fucking correct. It's way too correct. For kids. It was really fucked up. But is Oh, you showed me that uh, movie, All Dogs Go to Heaven? Yeah. That shit's fucked up. Dude, they're getting drunk. They're smoking. That like, shit they, is they like... Kill, they're dead half the fucking time. <laughs> like, I watched that with they're, you and I had never seen it. He has a gambling problem. That's oh. the whole reason he died. Oh, that dog so had a adult. gambling problem. It's so adult. And, yeah, but that like that movie, like yeah. when I was little, it like hit me in like the deepest place ever. Yeah. And like, I, like you can't even describe it. No, and then when no. we watched it together, I hadn't watched it in like years. It, and like years. you see shit that you didn't fucking. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I also well, you're aware of it when yeah. you're little, but mm-hmm. it doesn't like really resonate with yeah, you. Yeah. But like when I went back and watched it with you recently, I was like, "This is the shittiest movie." Like they, they just like jump from the plot all yeah. over the place. And then the sound—you don't even hear them talking half the time. Yeah, They're like it's quiet. Fucking bad, yeah. man. And and <laughs> like when you add all of that up, yeah. Like yeah, the plot's kind of fucked. Everything is kind of fucked about it. Like yeah. it's not well made. Yeah. And at, at least in terms of like what makes a good kids movie now. Like yeah. the great family movies for now. Sure, for sure. And that was such like a shitty like fucking execution on all fronts. Yeah. And it just it made me feel so many feels. Yeah. So I didn't even fucking care, man. Yeah. It is what it is. Like I mean, some some of it may not be perfect in everyone's eyes, but as long as, you know, it, it's it's doing a job and it knows what it's doing. Right. So, you know, but I think by comparison, like the the family movies and TV shows that are out now are just like they're really really good, you know. Yeah. Like like you could go watch Finding Nemo as an adult with your kids and die fucking laughing. Well, because and I you feel like leave there offended. And you know what? That's the thing. Like I feel like they've uh, especially animated movies nowadays have hit a stride, or at least have been held to a certain standard that didn't exist back then, where you can now appeal to both adults, kids teenagers everything 
in a way that's not slipping things that you right. just kind of want to throw in there to be well, like, fuck it. You I know what I mean? I think what they've now realized is that, you know, those are some of the movies that are going to make the most money out exactly. of and, and like you Finding Nemo is a great example. Yeah, and Finding Nemo is a great example. Like, it really did cross platforms. Like, you watch this movie as a kid and it's magical. It's like beautiful. It's like I a great a story. Kid. I was an adult and I was pissing my pants. Well, I don't know how, how old I was, but I'm not I'm not saying I watch it as a kid. I'm saying you right. watch it as a kid yeah. and it can be the most amazing movie. Right. But then you watch it as an adult, you're like, this is a is a great story. Right. You know what I mean? It's well, great yeah. characters. It's funny. And so like, and now it's just. They want to get your own money. Exactly. They don't, they and, don't want you, because well, I'm almost positive. I can't speak for my parents, but I remember my dad took me to see The Little Mermaid. I'm pretty sure he took me to see like Cinderella and stuff when they were in theaters yeah, and okay. I was like and those were great at the time because yeah. they were musical yeah least, classic yeah. yeah they were like you know visually very yeah, good for the for time sure. and it, they weren't as like jumpy and weird as all dogs go to heaven yeah but I think that when I was a kid you know when your parents take you to see a kid's movie they're kind of like tapping out for the afternoon being yeah. like this is for you bitch yeah. which is not the same now it's not the it's same not, now because no. people genuinely want to see these yeah. Film because yeah. they're films yeah. now. I mean, How to Train Your Dragon, Big Hero Six, like yeah, these they're... are movies that adults want to see. Minus Brave, Brave sucked ass. I, I, I don't want to talk about Brave. <laughs> Brave is like the, the sore thumb. It was like it was trying to just be one. I mean, right. it, um, yeah. I mean, The Incredibles. I mean, there's just like so many good but ones. But I also now. think like Wally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, ow. Wally, Eva. Um, <laughs> not only on that front, but also on television's front. Yeah. Like they've made family programming much more tolerable to the adults that need to sit yeah. there and watch them. Which is nice. Yeah, no, it's it nice. Is. They've but gone I, a good direction. I'm, I'm like never giving up on the fact that kid game shows need to come back or else I'm going to Well, lose you know what? I feel like they might come back and they might even come back like somewhere no, like, on no, well, they no, they like on YouTube. Well, no, like on YouTube. Because, because I feel are too fucking like hung up on the fact that they don't want their kids coming in first, second, and third. No. But I think I think that generation is slowly going away because kids are now on the internet and kind of doing shit themselves. Yeah, you might so, be right. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of young talent on YouTube, and I feel like if there were to be something like that, a YouTube show would be something where it would yeah, exist. Yeah, I feel like our country was sort of going down this a little bit yeah. ridiculous Yeah, and then path. the internet happened. And then the kids were like, yeah, you can go fight that battle with whoever for like the next three years. I'm going to yeah. go on the internet and take a picture of my tits and send them to my boyfriend. Mom, <laughs> shut up. <clears throat> Or that. <clears throat> you know what I mean, though? No, absolutely, absolutely. Like, the and it's like, parents it, it's, got it, so concerned with babying their children yeah, that all that the of a kids sudden, were just in the like, blink fuck. of an eye, their kids are like, hey, <laughs> fuck off. It, it almost backfired for the parents, but in a positive way, in a weird way. I don't yeah, know. I really hope we get past the whole, like, way, way helicoptering and oversheltering. Well, you children. know what? It's interesting that you bring that up because, like, you don't, like, okay, so there was a while where that was a big thing. It was like, you know, everyone gets a trophy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? The whole right. over... And, and then... I never really, until this moment that we're talking about, I never really put that in context with the internet and how a lot of young people have been liberated to do things on the internet on their own. Like kids can go on and right. watch videos be, on their own. They can participate. To the rest of the world. Exactly, right. and they they have everything at their you know at their the world is their oyster on the internet, and right. so it's it is kind of interesting that you don't. I mean, I, at least me, like I feel like that a couple of years ago, that whole parenting thing was a bigger issue than it is right now. And I think I the, the internet is directly related to why I, that is. Well, I agree because parents, you know, everyone's natural instinct as a parent is to make sure that bad stuff doesn't happen to your kid. That's yeah. the point of being a parent. Yeah, but the, yeah. the reality is like in days before internet and get the information age and everything's at your fucking fingertips, yeah. you could shelter your children. Yeah. Unfortunately, with everything that's available it's to not anyone an option with, it, now. with an internet connection yeah. you can't really you can't shelter your yeah. child yeah no matter anymore. how much you want to i mean you can or but then they're just like nor completely you, fucking right. nor can you fight their battles for them yeah. anymore yeah for sure because right. it used to be like if you were getting bullied in school yeah. like not that this ever really fucking happened to me but it yeah. happens like yeah. a parent would go into school and fucking oh yeah i've seen that a hundred times out, yeah. chew the teachers yeah, yeah, out yeah. like make it stop no. but a parent does not have the ability to go on the internet and tell everybody to stop <laughs> nor do they have the ability to prevent what their kid is doing to right. you know what i mean involve yeah. himself in something but Good tangent. It's good and bad. That was bad. a good tangent. No, it's I like good that and tangent. bad, but I think it's also reflecting in our culture of entertainment and that like we're trying to provide an accurate like, you know, message or life or whatever, yeah. story, picture, and that it's not all fucked up. It's yeah. not Ren and Stimpy, yeah. but it's also not like this perfect little fucking Yeah, like I mean the undertones in Wally about the future of society were right. very, very out there. Yeah, you gotta but keep it's real. not fucked up. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it 
Anyways. No, good talk, though. Good talk. Good right. talk. Good high five. Good job. Oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> we broke the podcast oh, with our high five. It was an atomic high five. These, these mics are, like, hot right now. Hot They're, F. like, on fire. Okay, um, let's move on to top five things you couldn't live without at in middle, middle school. school. So keep in mind we were in middle school in different ages or different years, sorry. Oh. So why don't you go ahead first you since I let Yeah, you go first. Okay. I think this one is a little bit wrong because I stopped maybe like sixth or seventh grade, but my trapper keeper was everything and bay. Do you know what that is? Is that the finger trap thing? No. The trapper keeper? Yeah, a trapper keeper is. was like okay, if you had a trapper keeper you were fucking you were the man. Okay. So it's basically get ready. No, I'm to ready. Get your I'm fucking go. mind blown. Okay? Do it. Do it. Blow it. Imagine a Tamagotchi. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's nothing to do with anything like that. It's literally just a binder that would like fold up, or you could like zip it up. What? But they. Okay. What do you mean? Don't act like your mind is. Really no wait. Actually like blown. so. Wait. They, like hold your papers, but it folds. Yeah. It just like closes. It literally just closed. That's it's it. It's a binder that closes. Yeah. But it had, like, Lisa Frank designs on it. Oh. Okay? Okay. For girls. For guys, yeah. it would have maybe, like, Spider-Man. Oh. What about Batman? Sure. Okay. I mean, I'm not 100% sure that they had the rights to those. Yeah. But they at least look like... Trapper Keeper. Cool things. Okay. And you could put your pencils in there, like, maybe right. a couple of them. Yeah. But, like, that was the thing. All right. And you could put stickers on it. Yeah. It was Bay. All right. Trapper Keeper. Good it one. It was Bay Aff. What's next? Okay. Uh, my Trapper Keeper, uh, my same outfit. Okay. <laughs> okay, good, good. <laughs> because I was a guilty of same outfit wearing Every day. for many yeah, years. That's good. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, in my sixth grade picture and maybe in my seventh grade picture, I was wearing my same outfit. Nice. And that's good. I would, I would wear it, like, you know, two or three days a week and yeah. then wash it and, like, be really upset on the days that I couldn't wear it. Would you like to know what it consisted of? Mm. Um, black corduroy pants. Oh, yes, corduroy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they weren't tight either. They were, like, kind of baggy. Yeah. Because uh, that was a thing, because it was the 90s. Mm -hmm. And also a long sleeve blue shirt, like light blue. But it was really soft. Oh, and you had a little outfit. So that That's was my cute. outfit. Okay. Um, I also could not live without my homemade necklaces. I had one that was, like, twirled up like a telephone cord. Aww. And then the other one was, like, a bunch of beads. You remember puka shells? Yeah. Oh, my God. I hated puka shells. Oh. I did not have Thank any God of that's not a thing anymore. Because I could not, um, you know, money doesn't grow on fucking trees, Jenna. Make your own necklaces. Okay, Jenna. <laughs> Is um, this future Jenna telling me? Yeah. Jenna? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my glittery gel pens. Okay. I forget what they were called, but they would write oh, really smooth. I, I know about my sister had those. I and remember they were those. Like glittery and they were bay. Yeah. But you couldn't use those for school. Those were only for like drawing and doing. Yeah. Like. Well, also drawing on your binder. And your trapper keeper. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, trapper keeper. I also could not live without me and my friends had a collective diary. I don't know if people still fucking do this, but like we would have a book, like a notebook. Burn book. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I'm just, kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, in the back, yeah. we would list like who we thought had like in terms of boys, like who was the hottest yeah. in our grade or like who had the best personality. Like now, of course, you read stuff on the internet. It's like they, they raided their classmates and like yeah. everyone's so angry. Like yeah. how could they do this? I'm like, no, we did that no, all you, the everyone, time. Yeah, I mean, it's a or, natural like, thing to you do. Would write in there like you know so i would have the it was like a red fox yeah like i told, told the story about how in kindergarten you pass around the fox yeah. every weekend or whatever um so we would pass around the diaries so i bring it home for a night and like write about whatever i was doing and then you know you'd give it to your friend yeah. i think there's like four or five of us and we'd also always write like who we had a crush on so that none of us ever like hung out with the boy that the, the other wrong one guy. liked. yeah yeah, yeah. that's really it was really cute yeah and it, there was nothing bad in it yeah like, some of these stuff that these middle school kids do. I'm like, no, we literally just would talk, like, if we liked a boy. Yeah. That was about as fucking... Yeah, you're at a weird age in middle school, so... Well, you know when you have a sleepover and, like, the juiciest shit you can get into is, like, who you like. Yeah. Yeah, but who do you like? You like Eric, don't you? And you're like, It's all about no? who you like, absolutely. Oh, my God, I do not like Eric. And then, like, four months later, you're, like, dating Eric. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then I also could not live without my diary. Okay, you I had a personal diary. I used to write diary. my diary yep. all the time. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. What do you got? Well, I was in middle school when there were iPods. Oh, so, fuck off. <laughs> okay, so iPod, my iPod mini. Oh. It, you remember that? The colors ones? It wasn't even the first generation. No. You had already like gotten second generation. 
Yeah. Third generation. Well, no, I started with the click wheel one, the yeah. one that actually had a wheel. Yeah. And then my friend got an iPad mini, an iPod mini, and I was like, oh, fuck, yeah. that is t- tight. So I like saved up and I got one of those. Um, MySpace. Couldn't live without that. You fucking check that thing every day after school. You run home, get on the computer, you know, update your status, whatever. Um, I was in college. Upload new cool pictures and even so weird. You're in college? I think so. I, like, Six years? Um, well, I think I was in, uh, no, I was like in sixth grade, I think. When did my, when was it a thing? I don't know. I, re- I distinctly remember being in college like going to my like student teaching yeah, thing yeah. at Seacoast Middle High School, I think it was called, and the kids being like, "Yo, Miss, Miss, what's your MySpace?" And I'm like, "I can't give you my MySpace. Yeah. Like, you can't." I don't know. Do I was on MySpace pretty early because uh-huh. I was like on MySpace for a while. I didn't get on Facebook for a long time. What year was that? I don't know. I don't know. So we, I should look that up. Yeah, we should. That um, doesn't. Yeah, it's not important. I just remember in middle school. I had a group of friends, and we would always. Oh, group of friends. Um, mm-hmm. Group of friends. I, I would be, you know, we would always go home and check. We would always have play dates. They would sleep right. over, and you'd just be on MySpace, like checking out girls' profiles, like uploading <laughs> pictures, uploading pictures of your, your friends or whatever. Okay, so that was it. Um, a cool away message on AIM. Ooh, okay, I can relate to that. Right? Oh, yeah. And then they added the feature where it could put whatever music you were listening to. I did that, too. I was just going to say that. Oh, yeah. That was cool. Mine was always so embarrassing, though. Well, I had to make a playlist when I turned that on because otherwise Mm -hmm. I would be fucking mad embarrassed. No, see, first of all, I should have added, like, maybe Napster and shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, I fucking... We used to illegally download the fuck out of music. Yeah, yeah. LimeWire? You remember that? Yes. LimeWire. That one worked amazing. Um, but my aunt, my Aunt Mary, mm. she was actually, the I think, the head of copyright law oh, in the Library of Congress where she fucking worked when it was like yeah. Napster or whatever. Um, so I That's think crazy. She's one of the reasons why that shit's over. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that's crazy. But I love that. But like in my stupid, first of all, my username was Paco300 <laughs> because Devin made it and then gave it to me. Yeah, yeah. Or we might have shared it. I can't remember. Paco300. I think me and Devin shared Devin's Paco300. Devin's got good 300. taste. Yeah. And then I would put that little thing in my profile. Yeah. And um, it would just be like kill yourself playlist because I loved listening. Just like sad songs. Like the saddest yeah. fucking music you Oh, yeah. When you're that age, to. you go you go through shit. Oh, man. You I'm so hear sad. It. Just um, sit in my room and like lay on the ground and listen. To, I would literally call it kill yourself playlist. Yeah. I listen. Is that where that comes from? Yeah. yeah. I, st- I'm, like, I still say that. I know because you say that now when song, sad songs come I know, on more than so, once in a row. Like, mind you, anyone that's like a young person out there, please do not take that seriously. I would yeah, really would a, just call it, yeah. oh, no, dude, I'm going to sit around yeah. and listen to my kill yourself. It <laughs> doesn't mean playlist. kill yourself. Like, um, just like I'm sure you could have a kill your parents playlist and you would understand what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> I hate you, dad. <laughs> No. Father. Yeah, yeah. Ah. yeah some chop suey. <laughs> yeah. System of a down. Yeah, yeah. Why have you forsaken me? That's all. Yeah, yeah. Father. Dear father. father, father I write you. Father. <laughs> some Weezer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. So many dad no, issues. No, Everclear. The one where it's like about his dad or whatever. I no, I was singing a separate one. I was oh, singing I the were. Weezer one. I know you were. Oh. Um, giving you another okay one. so hair gel because spiky thing his spiky hair was like the thing oh, yeah. you fucking spike that shit up mm. that's it i liked in well, spiky fucking hair that was that was a thing for a long time oh for yeah guys. oh yeah and big. i just really liked when a kid would be wearing a lot of hair gel and it was like a really shitty one because it would start like flaking off in the yeah. afternoon did you ever have a shitty oh one? i had the shitty oh yeah i had the shitty kind it would and be like shiny like in the everywhere. morning and then just dry and weird later on <laughs> it was like eh, it's like, it like worse than mousse and it would be all fucked oh, up god okay um, and so the last thing and i think it's really important uh that i couldn't live without in middle school was axe body spray Ooh, girl. because i had pe first period uh my seventh grade year, and then my sixth grade year, the year before that, I had PEA period, so it was there in the morning. So I had to fucking get sweaty, and I would I would never shower. I mean, you didn't shower. You just changed you and axed time. up. You have yeah, like 10 you just minutes. changed out of your PE clothes that you never wash all mm-hmm. year, and then axed the fuck up. It smells like yep. rat poison inside that locker room, yeah. and then you go to the rest of your day. And every boy in school just smells like axe, and you just deal with it. I know. Well, we had like that Victoria's Secret like body spray. I yeah. think I, I used Love Spell an awful yeah. lot. And all the rage was strawberries and champagne. Oh, my God. 
You know, now those yeah. are like and the, in, the, D, the D team of the Victoria's <laughs> Secret fragrances. Well, but we had strawberries and champagne. That was your thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was girl. And, and then when That's like why everyone new, in middle school smells like shit. Yeah, exactly. Everyone in middle school. It's either Sweat or Axe and Victoria's Secret. And um, whenever they came, without, came out with a new... Uh, why does it smell like burning in here? Does it? No, oh, never mind. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, keep going. Because these 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 mics are fire. Oh, um, it's because my mixtape is fire. Oh my god. Anyway, they come out like a new, you know, flavor or whatever of axe, and oh, yeah. everyone would have it. Um, all right, so let's pick it up. What are we on next? Top five favorite video games growing up. Oh, okay. Ours should be probably different. Yeah. Because mine are fucking weird. Yeah. You want me? You um, want to start? Yeah, I'll start. Yeah, go start. I have Mario for Game Boy. Okay. The old school, like, gray Game Boy. Okay. Whatever that one was. And also Tetris for that okay. Game Boy. Um, Mario for Nintendo 64. Okay. Which was fucking my life. Yeah. And then also for Nintendo 64, Chameleon Twist and 007. GoldenEye? Yeah, which one? GoldenEye. Oh, fuck yeah. Dude, love I love that. Guided, I was terrible guided, at it. Do you ever use the guided missiles where you, like, shoot the missile and then you're the missile and you're like... Shh. More than that, me and Devin that used to play the, the Star Wars one where you had to like loop the cables around those big like crawling like guy things, whatever. Battlefront. No, Star uh, Wars. Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, well then yeah. It was the best game ever. Yeah, it was Star so Wars Battlefront. I'm adding that to my list. We used to play that all the time. Star Wars Battlefront is the best. Oh my god. And Star Wars Battlefront 2 was so good. Yeah. And for uh, Goldeneye, we used to do the multiplayer where it's like a split yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would just, my brother would fucking own me. Yeah, he'd find you and kill oh, you. Oh, he would kill yeah, me. Yeah, oh, no. out of me. And over what about, and over oh, and over. dude, for, the, the, yes. Both of those I'm happy you chose. Do you know what Huge. Chameleon Twist is? No, never heard of it. It's the stupidest, like, So child you had an N64? Yeah. Um, I gave it away when, like, right when I started YouTube, and, like, the big, huge thing on YouTube was doing giveaways. Mm. So, like, it was sort of a, like, a, a fucked up, like, people would use it as a ploy to get people to watch their channels. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sounds like early YouTube but days. I wasn't making any money on YouTube or anything, so yeah. I just thought that's what you did. I thought you, it was, like, a respect thing. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, if you guys are going to watch my video, I might as well give somebody something. Yeah. So I had a contest to give away my Nintendo 64. Yeah. And, you know, I got some really good, like, video submissions. Yeah, yeah. And this this thing was my fucking, this was my baby. I'd yeah, had it yeah. since I was Grew a kid. We it. got yeah. it for Christmas. And uh, I'll tell you what Chameleon Twist is in one second. But this, I got a fucking submission uh, from a girl that had cancer. And yeah. she was literally just laying in her bed and was like, I just really want your Nintendo 64 because I have nothing to do and I'm just getting a bunch of chemo. So can oh I have it? And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. So we got her a bunch of other Nintendo Damn. 64 games sent it to her. It was fucking sick. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I feel good saying That's goodbye cool. to it now. That's cool. But uh, one of the games I gave her was Chameleon Twist, which you're literally just a little chameleon and you can like jump and like go through these like candy levels yeah. and stuff. But then you could also just like stick your tongue out and go and like grab things. <laughs> yeah. So it goes. So it was like a, you were that character. Like, you went around blah, blah, doing blah, blah, stuff. Blah, 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 blah. At the end. Yeah. yeah. You like grab stuff. and That's oh, awesome. Fucking the most fun game ever. And I beat it like 20 times. That's sweet. It was great. And 64 was fucking Nobody fun. Nobody knows what it is. I was so, yeah. I mean, we did, I used to go to my friend's house and play, she had one of the, I forget what it was called, but we play like Donkey Kong and that kind of stuff, but yeah. we never had one of those. Yeah. The older ones. Yeah, yeah. N64 was the first gaming system that we got. Yeah. We were fucking pumped. Are those yours? Yeah. Um, okay. So you reminded me of a couple. I'm mm-hmm. going to add those on at the top. Okay. Um, the 007 split screen gun games where mm-hmm. you play with your friends. Uh, I played... Um, Battlefront, like crazy all the fucking time. Yeah. I loved Battlefront. Um, and then, okay, so my list goes as such. Oh, I had Super Nintendo. Yeah. It was a flat gray one. Right, with the yeah, flat that's controls. what I'm talking about, where we would play Donkey Kong at my friend's house. Yeah, yeah, Donkey Kong the was on that one. one. Yeah, the old one, yeah. the flat one. So I played Super Mario World. Um, I played some Donkey Kong. I played yeah. Link, all those games. Um, sorry, Zelda. What am I saying? Zelda, I played. You played Link. just Link. Yeah, I played just Link. Um, okay, so those were like the first ones. Okay, RuneScape. You know what RuneScape is? I've only known like the iPad game okay, and Ru- stuff. Oh, there's an iPad game of RuneScape? Yeah, I beat uh, it. I beat all of them. No, I don't think we're talking about R-U-N-E, RuneScape. 
Oh, I thought you were saying room escape. Oh, no. I was like, there's a ton I'm of talking, them. I'm the talking about Ru- This is like, them. for those of you who know RuneScape, you know the fuck I'm talking about. This was <laughs> epic. You, you played on your computer. Room escape. It was called RuneScape. You had your own character. You're in a world, and you basically go around. I don't know what's related to now because I don't play that type of game now, but you mm-hmm. basically would go around. You play online, which was crazy. Yeah. Like, you're playing with other people. That wasn't a you thing. You each have your own character. You're on your computer, though. Mm. And, yeah, we used um, to play dope fucking computer games. Oh, so cool. And you would level up and you would buy new shit and you would meet people. Oh, it was like the most fun and Stick fucking... World. You played Stick World. Stick World, yeah. It was, it was not as much. I played that for like a month and then I stopped. But RuneScape, that was like life. Okay, uh, Dance Dance Revolution. Oh, okay. We had an Xbox when I was in like middle school and we got the at-home pad, the one that you fold up and you can plug what? it in. Oh my God, we played... So much because I had six kids in the house growing up, and we would all fucking compete, and oh. it was so much fun. Look, DDR was the we thing. Didn't have that. Um, Pokemon on my Game Boy. Oh. I had one of those uh, big fat gray Game Boys. Yeah, played it all the time, all the time. Like I probably logged more hours in Pokemon than anything, one other thing I've ever done. Yeah. Um, and then Halo. Halo holds a special place because when I uh, first played Halo, my friend came over and we literally played it for an entire weekend. Like, we didn't do anything else the whole weekend. Like, we got snacks, we went out to the garage, and we were like, Halo, that's it. And it was like my first experience playing, like, getting a game when it came out, you know, and playing it like that, so... That's really fun. Yeah. I forgot, like, when you said video games, I just immediately thought of my Game Boy and my Nintendo 64. Yeah. But I told you before, we used to play a lot of fucking PC games. Yeah. We used to play King's Quest. Yeah. Well, King's Quest 5 or 6. Was oh, like see, a, now there's more, there's more coming back to that. it. Yeah. I loved Snood was all the rage Snood when I was in one. high school. And then we played uh, Mist and all that stuff with my dad. And it was like such a nice like time we would go there. It'd be like yeah. raining or like winter time. And we'd all crowd around the computer with my dad yeah. and play like Goofy's fucking Matterhorn yeah. and like the weirdest <laughs> shit. Have you we really played a Monty Python game. It was like, it would, you know, it would just be like. Mm, oh, you played mm, it recently. Mm, mm. Is, or what was yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. I downloaded it on my computer yeah. so that I could... Super old. Remember, Amazing graphics. Like, for that weekend, it started because you went to work on that Saturday, and then you came home and like, what the fuck are you doing? Jen, I'm like, <laughs> I'm playing King's Quest right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, it's King's Quest, <laughs> it's yeah. the shittiest... Um, I played a game it's called amazing. Space Junkie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What it was, was basically that? like, you know, the Galactica games where you're on the bottom and you yeah. shoot up and then... Okay. It was Space Junkie. And I don't know why it was so fun, but I played it on my my our little like Mac at mm-hmm. home, the little colored one. Space Chunky Man. I don't. I've literally never talked about it with anyone because no one ever knows what it is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But if any of you know what Space Chunky is or how I can fucking play it now, let me know because I missed that game. I had a super super do- like old Mac that was my uncle's. Yeah. That like I used to have in my room, which was not a yeah, fucking yeah. thing. Because I, he gave it to us, and then it was our computer for a little while, and then I was like, "Wait, can I have this?" Yeah. Because I would just go on there, nice move, and use paint. Like I'd be oh, in my room, and, and oh, I'm like, "Dude, I'm fucking fuck. painting in my room right now." Yeah. <laughs> and then it also had um, Pong on there. Yeah. And uh, what like Space Invaders? I yeah. Think, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, like, <laughs> like yeah, fuck yeah. That was a good one. I I'm in my that. fucking room right now. Yeah, right? Suck it, everyone. When I was a kid, my I don't dad know if you use the computer room. I know. We had a computer closet. It was a closet. Like, you fucking open the closet door and shut it, and then you're just in... That's how you use the computer. (laughs) Uh, When I would visit my dad at work growing up, in his office, he had a game on his on his computer called Desktop Destroyer, and you turn it on, and then you have a whole fucking arsenal of weapons, and you just fuck the desktop up. You have like axe, you have like machine gun, oh, you have flamethrower, yeah. and you're lighting his folders on fire on fire, That's and like awesome. oh, it was like it was the best part of going to visit him at work, no doubt. Like That's hands so on. Cool. Oh, I, I still laughing. to this day have on my iPad. I have Minesweeper and Solitaire, and play them all the time. Yeah, those Although, are classics. I have the. Um, we played Tetris on the Xbox the other day. Oh, it was everything. It was fun. We like competed. Um, but I play that stupid. He makes fun of me all the time because I play this thing called like Solitaire Golf or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh, I love that shit. Yeah. Like I could play Solitaire yeah, until you play fucking it, yeah. forever. <laughs> that game is incredible. Yeah. I play it with cards by myself. Yeah. At our lake house. Oh yeah, you're Growing good. up, that was my life. Yeah. 
I would t- I would go outside with my critter box. I would catch some grasshoppers and frogs. You and your and when critter box. When it got too box. dark, got too dark. I would go inside and fucking play <laughs> solitaire. And then Little once Jenna. everyone ate dinner, then we could play hearts and fucking spades and shit. Fuck yeah. I feel like you'd be a really fun kid to hang out with. I was the weirdest kid ever. Yeah, like you have a critter box sold. Well, I just think it was so interesting as I got older and realized, like, I would babysit younger kids. And, you know, they need a lot of, like, engagement. Yeah. Like, you need to play with them yeah, and, like, yeah, give them sure. activities to do. And I just remember sort of being, like, uh, you know, as long as I was outside, like, nobody had to fucking watch me. Yeah, you were, you could do your own thing. Well, yeah, I mean, we weren't allowed to, like, go swimming by ourselves and stuff. But, like, you know... You just go swing on the swing set yeah. and just, like, use your imagination for fucking hours. Yeah. And then that was your day. Yeah. Then you, you're done. You weren't like a lot of kids, though. Well, I was also so fucking weird. Yeah. Like, Which I would is just a good go, thing. like, collect a bunch of grass and put yeah. it in a box with a frog in it. And, like, I'm good for hours. I had a gardener snake, grow- snake growing up. Oh, I loved those. Oh, so fun. And, and then he died. all but over you. It's okay. <laughs> you died. He died. <laughs> oh, he was uh, awesome. My sister had a boa. Speaking of which, like little pets that you had, remember I was telling you the story about in first grade we hatched monarch butterflies? Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, tell that story. So, like in, in first grade in upstate New York, there the we have a ton of monarch butterflies, which we don't see them anywhere else, really. I mean, I haven't really seen them out west. Incredibly I don't, cool I don't know looking their migratory butterflies, patterns yeah. or whatever, but they're the orange and black ones. Yeah. And uh, so, like, in kindergarten, first grade, whatever, you everybody always has, like, either ducks or chickens. Did you do that? You, like, hatch Yeah, we did chickens. little chickens. Yeah, chicks, yeah. And it's so fun because they're, like, really cute and mm-hmm. sweet and yeah. fluffy. But we... The incubator. Yeah, yeah. And you had to, like, turn the eggs. Like, yeah. It's my turn to turn the eggs today. I'm going to go turn the eggs. Oh, it's, I did such a good job. Me. Um, but we, in first grade, we hatched monarch butterflies. And so we had them in all these containers. I don't know where the fuck they came from. Like, thinking about it now logistically, I'm like, I don't even know how that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, you know, for the majority of the time while we were there, they're just in these cocoons and you're learning about them and you're sort of like, all right, cool, yeah, we get it. They were caterpillars. Now they're all in cocoons and whatever. And then the day that they were hatching, we're all just like, oh, Oh, today is it like all at once? They're not like people. They don't have like different birthdays. It's like, yeah. oh, they're all hatching today. Okay. Yeah. So our teacher like gets everybody outside. She's like, it's happening. They're they're hatching, and we're like, all right. Which yeah. is badass. I don't I don't even think I've ever seen that even now. Like, yeah, you know, but you know, you crazy. sort of you're a fucking what six year old, and you're like, oh, I guess the butterflies. Yeah, are coming. you don't really get. Yeah, you what's don't happening. really yeah. understand what the fuck is about to go down. So we all go outside, and they're like they're hatching. They're coming out, and like they can't really fly when they first come out so they're just sort of like doing this with their wings like strengthening them so they're all all of the butterflies are just like all over us just like all these them. little six-year-olds and you know they our teachers telling us like be really gentle like don't touch their wings like don't touch yeah. them so we're all just saying like little statues covered in baby monarch butterflies it's the fucking like coolest thing, thing i've ever heard and so for like i don't i want to say an hour but i don't remember how yeah. long it actually was we're just all standing outside just covered in these butterflies and then they all slowly as they get stronger and stronger they're just pumping their wings and stuff and like hanging out moving around yeah. on you and then they just all kind of just take off and fly into the sky. Is that not like the most magical story ever? I love hearing like that that kind of stuff. So cool. I know. And that's the most disappointing thing about growing up is that I have that like incredibly magical, amazing memory. And then I'm like in second grade, I'm like, when are we doing the butterfly thing again? Yeah. And then you just don't get to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, can we, are we doing the, the monarchs? I yeah. like them. Can we have that thing uh, again? It's like, I mean, and think about it. Like it's a, you're literally watching them grow the ability to fly. It and it's amazing. literally on top of you while it It was happens. amazing. Sounds amazing. They were never my actual pet. They were our class pet. Yeah, but, but still, that I mean, still. No, that's, one of the coolest things. That's super cool. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, she told me that story on a hike recently, and yeah. I was like, fucking magical. Because I think so cool. we saw a butterfly or a monarch butterfly, and I was like, you know, we used to fucking see them all the time. Yeah. I don't see them ever, and it's yeah. really sad because they're so pretty. Anyways. It's a really, really, really cool thing. And, like, it's definitely one of those we things. We should try where... and do it. Let's buy some illegal butterflies. Well, no, and catch I bet. Them. Well, 
that's one way. They have like butterfly sanctuaries and stuff. That's what I'm saying. I, there's ways to do it. Yeah, you can. Where they at least go come somewhere. and land all over you. But it does. It's like you know when you're a little kid. Like first of all, we had a kid in our our grade that yeah. was obsessed with like alternative pets. So he would bring. He would all sit in a circle with our legs like out like this. Like, yeah. Sitting on the ground, and he would bring in his fucking tarantula and let it crawl all around, and we would touch it. And he no. Told us, no. Yeah. No. He would. He would tell us how to Fuck hold that. it, and like he was so educational to all of us. That we none of us ever really grew up having a fear of tarantulas because we're like, oh, that's Jonathan's pet. He loved that fucking thing. Her name was like Sally. You or move your bed. Yeah. You move your bed. <laughs> but like, I really had like a great time as a child uh, growing up around. I, I don't things. think I saw that many. And it also animals. doesn't register with you when you're little. Because yeah. if someone's like, don't be afraid, it's going to be fine. You're like, oh, all right. But now if you're an adult and a moth comes anywhere near your head, you're yeah. like, no. <laughs> yeah. You know what well, I mean? Well, yeah, it's instinct, but yeah. Absolutely. When you're a kid, you have no reason to fear that. So yeah, I think even if even if I could recreate that butterfly moment yeah. for myself, I think there would be a level of anxiety of like I'm gonna break them all or yeah. like, I'm killing them. Well, because you're a kid, you don't think about or it. I don't want them to touch my face. Though. Yeah. You know, but you're a kid. Sure. You're like, haha! It's in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> when do we do that thing again? Guys, when the butterflies guys, were in my guys, mouth. Guys, guys, look at this one. It's actually on my tongue. Huh? <laughs> Anyways, good you tangent. Love, good yeah, good tangent. tangent. You loved being gross as a kid, right? Because I loved being gross. I mean, I was a little gross. I was a little gross. I, it's just a fun thing. I was more just like dirty. Yeah. From actually being in the dirt. Yeah. No, I wasn't like a eating my boogers kid. I was like just gross. I would, you know, be gross. I would be oh, dirty well, you were all the time. Oh, a little boy. Like, yeah. Little boys love to do gross shit. Yeah, just like kill little insects and stuff. Yeah, that's mean. I didn't yeah. like that. Oh, you were fry them. ants with it. No, I didn't really like that. Huh. All right, our last top five of our childhood <laughs> is? is our top five senpais. Senpais. All right, you go first. You want me to yeah, go first? Yeah, who are your senpais? Okay, mine were in no particular, actually, order. My first crush ever mm -hmm. was very bizarre once I grew up and realized and like looked back. The first person I ever had a crush on was Harrison Ford. Oh, yeah. that's I have a crush on Harrison Ford. I know. In Indiana Jones, I literally was like, is that what a man looks like? Because I really like him. Yeah. Uh, but, like, what a bizarre thing for, like, a young girl to really like, you know? <laughs> Super weird, but I love it. Right? No, I love it. And, like, Star Wars, I was like, he's yeah. really handsome. Oh, he's the man. Um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas was all the rage. Okay. Uh, he was on Home Improvement and, like, all those, like, Disney movies. Yeah. He's the voice of Simba in The Lion King. Okay. Uh, do you know who that is? No. No. I mean, I know who Simba is. I don't know who that person is. Okay. He was really adorable. Okay. Uh, Zach Morris. Okay. Or Mark Paul Gossler, whatever. Okay. Do you know who that is? Yeah. I do. I do. Who was Saved by the Ballads? Yeah. No, I know who that is. Yeah, no, I do. He's the main character yeah. in there. Yeah. Uh, Justin Timberlake and Brian from the Backstreet Boys I also loved. Okay. Is it okay if I also use Not Justin Nick Timberlake? Carter. Brian from the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Brian. I liked okay. Brian. Okay. Okay, tell me. Nick yours. Carter. No. I know your senpai is Aaron Carter. Beep. Oh, yeah. Na, beep, na, beep. Na, na. Have a good time. time. Um, okay, Batman. What? Batman was one of my senpais. I thought that... No, thought... no. Uh, let me explain. Senpai <laughs> is in, like, I met him. I actually met I thought, Batman. I thought we were making a list of, like, your crushes. I had a crush on Batman. I don't know. That's the thing. I'm bad at senpais. Like, they, they, they were all, like, strong male figures. Really? <laughs> well, no, because, like, here's the thing. Like, You don't right. have any girls that you had a crush on there on that list? Because now I, I mean, I was gonna put I was going to put Britney Spears because I had a poster on my wall of her Didn't for, like, three all? years. Yes, it's exactly. It's not original. But can I explain the Batman thing? Yeah. All right, let me explain. Um, I loved Batman so much. I wore Batman clothes, and my mom made me a Batman outfit. And I wore it, like, every day of the year. I wore it with my Ninja Turtle roller skates, and then <laughs> this on, is true. There's photographic. There's evidence. photographic. Picks and it did happen. Uh, Picks exactly, um, all the all the time. Not just Halloween. Literally, like throughout the whole year, I wore Batman, and I would learn to draw. And my mom taught me to draw, and I would draw Batman. Nothing but Batman. Just mm -hmm. all my drawings were Batman. So I loved him. And on one of my birthdays, my dad got his friend to dress up as Batman. And he came to my party, and it blew my mind. Like, it was the coolest fucking thing in the entire world. Batman was, like, at my party. Uh, so That's so cute. Batman was one of my senpais. I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not sorry. That's it. Can I um, tell you a, like, short related but unrelated story? Okay, yeah. My dad, my dad had a brother who, he passed away. But when I was little, he came over to my aunt and uncle's house one time when we were having yeah. Christmas, dressed up as Santa. 
And I never, after that, I never thought that that was my dad's brother. I was like, no, he's Santa. Oh, my God. Like, no, you don't understand. Ow. I know Santa. Yeah. I know him. Yeah. It's my uncle. <laughs> yeah. Okay? I legitimately thought he was actually That's really Santa funny. Yeah. Until I was, like, 13. Yeah. I'm not joking. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, okay. This next one's interesting and kind of weird. But, um, okay, it's another guy. His name was... Okay, I didn't have a lot of... Whatever, I had Britney Spears and that was it. I didn't, okay. Um, although Ronnie, my mom's good... She was like my first girlfriend. I was like 10 and she took me on a date to the oh, Disney store. My mom's yeah. best friend, Ronnie. Um, she loved me when I was a kid. Like, I mean, she loves me now, but she was like obsessed with me. I was like this little blonde like boy and she loved me. She like even put me... Because she's a dance teacher. She even put me in some of her like shows or dance shows for like, you know, the kids. And um, Also, you've always had an older girlfriend. <laughs> what can I say um, so she took me to like the Disney store on my birthday and it was like our date and I like bought like a sword and like a Hercules chest plate anyway so she was one of my senpais that okay so cute. yeah it was pretty cute um, okay so his name is Corey keep okay, the time out both of your senpais currently have noticed you so how can they be senpais because senpai noticed me sometimes senpai notices you never I notice some people that call me senpai. Never notices you. All right, let me get on with it. <laughs> okay. All right, Corey Potts. Okay, for those who... What the who, fuck is that? For the 99.99% of people who don't know who that is, let me explain it. Corey Potts was a quarterback for UCLA back in, I don't fucking know, like 2000, maybe earlier. Um, no, like after, 2000 or after 2000, like right around there. Uh, he was a quarterback for UCLA, and we knew him as a family friend. And he was basically dating one of my sister's dance teachers. And so he would babysit us. And he was the coolest. Like, we were like, oh, my God, Corey Paws is our babysitter. Like, he, because he was, like, cur- like, currently at UCLA. Like, we would go watch his practices. We would go to the locker room. We would meet all the players. Like, it was, like, the, fu- it was like the coolest thing in the entire world. And uh, he was my senpai. Like, that we- is, okay, that is fucking awesome. And I'm really jealous of you, first of all. Yeah. Second of all, it's adorable. Third of all, again, that's that's not a senpai. That it's a senpai. I had a you. signed picture of him on my wall, even though he babysat me. Ugh, it's not a fu- I don't. I, I'm not good at senpais. All right, you're gonna be happy with my next senpai. Anyway, if any of you no, knew, wait, hold on. Out. If any of you knew who Corey Paz was, wait, okay, but time out. That you need to comment because you're my friend. It that's also cool. reminds me of the episode of Friday Night Lights. Oh man, can't believe Big Tim Riggins lived next yeah, door to me. Yeah, that was it. Like that, that was kid. that was it. You're that that was it. I was that, that kid. He's cute as fuck. So cute. Um, Eminem. Okay, there you go. First he was senpai, a senpai. Except yep. it's not whatever. Why is it not a senpai? Because it's not a girl? Yeah. <laughs> All right, whatever. Just just deal with my all-male senpai list. Um, and the last one is a little confusing because I am a Red Sox fan. And I've ever since I've been a fan of a team, you know, particularly, uh, it's been a Red Sox. Uh, I've been a Red Sox fan and a mm-hmm. Patriots fan because you know ever since I got serious about following teams and not just kind of mindlessly watching sports, my dad showed me that the Red Sox was who I was a fan of. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but I did grow up with a stepdad who was a Yankee fan and a bunch mm-hmm. of stepbrothers who were Yankee fans, so we watched the Yankees all the time. Mm-hmm. So I loved Derek Jeter. Mm-hmm. I fucking loved Derek Jeter. Mm-hmm. Like I, my stepbrother loved him. I mean, he was just like the coolest dude ever, and we would watch him. And we would try to, we would go to the batting cages and like try to hit like him. And I mean, he was just the man. He was senpai. So Derek Jeter, yeah. I understand that one. Yeah. Everybody loves Derek Jeter. Yeah, he's never won senpai. So he's kind of. As much as you fucking hate him. Yeah, I mean, to, yeah, you gotta respect the guy. Respect. Yeah. yeah. So those are my senpais. That was fucking fun as shit. Yeah, it was fun. That was really fun. I really like this podcast. Yeah, good podcast. Marvel wants it to end, as Marvel. you can hear. That fucking noisy one. Just had it. Had it with everything. Had it. Good Whatever. podcast. Though. Good senpai list. Good senpai list. That's totally noticed you. And I guess I'll just sit over here if you guys, with my senpai list. And just never Eminem really noticed never noticed me. me. Derek Jeter never noticed me. Batman <laughs> noticed me once. Oh, I guess it's really time what for us to stop. going down out there? Thank you guys for watching and listening to the Thanks Janet for Julian listening podcast. to our kennel. Yeah, this is our kennel. <laughs> Welcome to Julian and Jenna's kennel. We love you guys. We'll be back next Monday for another episode. Yeah, leave in the comments any of your top five of these lists. Please do. We like to read them. And Space Junkie, hit me up about it. Yeah. Corey Paz, if you knew who that is. Even if we impressive. don't, even if we don't always comment back on all of them, we really do sit on the podcast and like read the, your input. Oh yeah, like we read the comments things. all the time. We yeah. fucking read the comments. You're Bay F. 
Love you guys. Love you forever. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Think, 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 think. Show me your dick. Think, 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 think. Senpai. How do I senpai? <laughs>